Hoffman. Welcome back. You're watching Emma Knows Money with Emma Folks and Stephanie Anderson. Yes. And I'm so glad to have her here today. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. We're going to switch gears a little bit and we're going to talk about um, one of the topics that I'm extremely passionate about, which is the sandwich generation. And the sandwich generation it's us. It's uh, the Generation Xers. Are we Gen Xers? Is that what they call this? They didn't like drag our name through the mud <laughs> as much, but I think we're Gen Xers. And typically our generation is sandwiched in between two other generations. We're in a lot of cases having to help take care of our parents, whether mm -hmm. it's financially or, you know, just providing support. Um, and or um, trying to get our kids in and out of college, or we have adult children, which we call boomerang kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> who've come back home. So do you want to talk a little bit about what you see or you have been seeing yeah. in regards to people that are in that sandwich generation? What should they be, uh, what types of conversation, what do they need to do and what type of conversations do they, do they be, should, Okay. Yeah. Scratch. Should they be having? Yeah. With their loved ones. Yeah. It's um, have. Well, first of all, have the conversation. So I, I, I don't know if you're this way, but I find with my parents, it is very difficult to talk to p our parents about money, and to just have an honest conversation about what what's going to happen. What kind of care do you want if you get sick? You know, just talking about all those things before you know something happens. So. That's the biggest thing. I, I know for me, I think just having the conversation, talking to mom or dad about, well, mom, if you get sick, do you wanna be in a facility? Do you yeah. wanna stay home? Okay, well, in order for us to accomplish the type of care you want, what kind of things have you put in place to make that happen financially? Do you know how much it costs to get that type of care? Um, so talking about it before mom and dad get sick. Um, I, that, that'd be my biggest suggestion. And then um, just not making the same mistakes with your own planning. Um, so if you see that mom and dad didn't necessarily think about what happens if they get sick, don't you do the same thing to your kids, right? right? What can I do differently to make life a little bit easier for my adult right. children if something were to happen to me? And um, that's putting a plan in place. That's a fair thing to do. Yeah, it is. It is really fair. So um, I would say it's one of those situations, especially when we're talking about what happens when you get sick, we're talking about long-term care, we're talking about the potential of Medicaid. Um, talk to a professional. So it's one of those things where people will, you know, I talked to somebody at church and somebody at church told me all I need <coughs> to do is get mom's house, put it in my name, and that way she, mom can get Medicaid. Yeah, there's a lot of misinformation <laughs> out there. Yeah. So this is, these are, this is one of the topics, and there are lots of them, but this is yeah. one of the topics where you really need to talk to a professional yeah. instead of taking the advice uh, from somebody at yeah. church um, or a co-worker because you can get yourself in a whole lot of legal trouble I and agree. taxation trouble doing, it, doing things that way. I agree. What do you think, um, how would you broach the subject, or how do you suggest people broach the subject with their parents especially if the parents are kind of closed off do you like hold a ticket like <laughs> a football game like oh, I'll give you these tickets but we're gonna have this conversation like how do you one of the one of the things that I've been thinking about um, and you can tell me what your opinion is on it is especially when you're dealing with parents who don't like to necessarily talk about money mm -hmm. you know we all have different types of parents and one of the things that um, I've found that works is you start bringing them into financial conversations before you want to have that conversation. Exactly. So you start getting them into the habit of having financial conversations about family dealings. Like right. I, I feel like we need to go back old school again yeah. where we're all having these, you know, conversations about money and how it impacts us and just start talking to them about the smaller things so that when it's time, usually like around Thanksgiving after they're full, yeah. <laughs> had some wine. Exactly. You can be, right, and they're nice and satisfied. <laughs> uh, then you can start broaching those <laughs> subjects. Like, right. I don't care how you get the information; yeah. it's just you get it. Get so, it. but it, it's starting to kind of, you know, prime them into okay. This is this is kind of the normal course of how we're going right. to do deal with stuff. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, you do have to ease into it because it can. You know, I've seen where you know. Families, you know, we'll have mom and dad in the office. Um, daughter or son has, you know, initiated them to come and see me. And when we're just, it, it, we just go right into it. You can see 
mom and dad just not feeling it really comfortable. Shut down. Like what what is going on? Right. Why are we here? What do you here? think's getting ready to happen? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not the best way <laughs> right. of going about it, but just easing into okay. it and and it might be a situation I, I know for me what has really worked is just using examples, you know, of what has gone right and what has gone wrong, what I've seen. And that helps quite a bit too. And so if you happen to know of any situations and we're seeing it more now than ever that people are needing and living longer and needing this type of care, what have you seen that went right? And what have you been able to see that went wrong? And bringing that up to parents to say, I don't want to be like this. Right. And listen to the stories that they tell yeah. you. You know, you know, a lot of times we tune out when they start talking about and miss such and such and what happened at church. But start paying attention because those could actually segue into having exactly. a, a more meaningful conversation about what you're what you're looking exactly. for. Exactly. Right? I agree. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about something that you brought up, which was long term care and what your opinion on long term care is. Okay. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> 